Yes, guys, your eyes are not deceiving you. You're looking at the very first gaming phone of 2022. That is the Red Magic 7. And uh, I've been using this device for a while. And I've got to say, though, there's some truly unique and impressive things in here. And they've done a lot to satisfy your gaming needs. So let's just start off with the hardware first. It's running the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Uh, but of course, you've got uh, something that's really important to the Red Magic series, which is the built-in uh, fan. Now, you've got vapor cooling chambers in there. But you've also got a brand new fan that runs up to 20,000. RPMs to cool your device much better. Now we'll see how well that does, but that allows you to extend your gameplay and push your games as much as possible. And we're looking at you, Genshin Impact. We'll be getting to you in a second. The display on this device is 6.8 inches, 165 hertz refresh rate. Yes, you heard that correctly 165 hertz refresh rate, which is truly impressive. But the other thing that's impressive, of course, is the touch sampling rate of 720. So you're playing a game like Call of Duty Mobile. You can feel it run smooth, fast. The display is just, it feels like butter, right? Now to couple that, the other unique feature you find on any Red Magic phone are the two side trigger buttons, which are remappable trigger buttons on this device, which is truly cool. And they have a touch sampling rate of 500 Hertz. So again, this is pushing everything to the max as a gamer. Now, the hardware feels very similar, uh, but still comfortable to use. You've got your power button uh, on top, right above the power button is one of the air vents for the fan. There's one right behind next to the camera module. And there's one on the other side where you have, of course, your volume rocker and as well your game center button. When you have all that built in, how is that gaming experience? That's the first thing. How does it feel just playing a game? Like I mentioned, Call of Duty Mobile plays well and great. You can see the frames per second. It's locked at 60 frames per second. It does that pretty easy and well. And then we take a game like uh, PUBG Mobile, where of course that runs just as well. And I like the fact that I could remap those buttons for each of those games so that I can actually go ahead and save that. And how do you actually do some of that stuff? Well. That has to do with the game center. Now the game center has two options or two aspects to it. If you actually slide that game center button, it takes you into the, the game center space. That first of all shows you all your games. You can have it in a carousel, you can have it in the list mode. And then you also have the power base where it has something that's brand new called plugins. Now the plugins are things you can download or at least activate that allow you to do a couple of things. You've got the 4D Vibrate, which is a new Vibrate feature that you can see in games like PUBG Mobile. And honestly, it actually works pretty well. Um, not as intense as maybe as I would like, but well enough that I really noticed it and I said, okay, this is pretty cool. You've also got aim assist if you need that while you're playing first person shooters. Uh, you've got, of course, uh, key position, solid equalization, all that stuff within the plugins there. Now, in that aspect, that just is pretty cool. Now, in the game space itself, you can do a couple of things. You can also check your network settings. Uh, you can see, uh, you can actually just turn off notifications if you want to. You can also customize the zones for miscellaneous touching in terms of your screen so you don't actually press the wrong buttons. You can customize the lighting be uh, behind the device, which is basically on top or below the Red Magic logo itself on there. Um, and then, of course, you can add water max and, uh, and you have a few more other options. Now, that's one aspect of the game uh, space. Now, the other aspect that I think a lot of people will like is the fact that you've got the game space within the game itself. This is where it truly shines and gives you so much more functionality compared to any other device. So one of the things, of course, is the fact that within that game space itself, you can go ahead and customize a couple of things. So you swipe from your top left hand side across and that gives you a game space, which gives you a couple of things. You have a menu that slides from the right that allows you to change, of course, your refresh rate from 165 all the way down to 60. You can have a performance bar, which you guys saw earlier, giving you your FPS for your game gaming sessions. You can turn on and off your fan, uh, which is nice. You can do recordings. But the other key thing is you can access those plugins I mentioned on the left and you can customize your shoulder buttons and you can customize those buttons uh, to be placed anywhere on screen and also the, the basically sensitivity of the buttons themselves. So that aspect is also pretty cool. Uh, customize the lighting if you want to as well and you can also customize your touch sensitivity. 
from 360 to 720. So I mentioned a lot you can actually do and this software is really robust. It allowed me to take advantage of the system itself and play the games I wanted to. As I mentioned, PUBG Mobile, we played that, that ran well. Smooth Extreme, that was, you know, 60 frames per second, locked in, no issues. Uh, and of course, Ultra HD Ultra, that also ran at 40 uh, frames per second solid. Again, that's what it's usually standard at. So that wasn't anything crazy or nuts. Now, how about um, 120 hertz gaming? So we do have a bunch of Android games that can actually play at 120 hertz, but this is a display that supports 165 hertz. So we actually went ahead and played a couple of those games. One of them that I really enjoyed was actually playing one called Modern Ops, and that actually ran 130, 140 frames per second. Uh, took advantage of, of course, the display, high refresh rate, played really well. And then of course, there's Real Racing 3, which is a game I haven't played in a minute, and that ran very, very well at, um, 165 frames per second, which is truly impressive to see something take full advantage of that high refresh rate. So that aspect is cool. Now you're saying, okay, Thunder E, that's great. Display works. What about performance? Now, before we even get into that major hardcore performance aspect, let's take a look at some of those performance benchmarks because you guys definitely want to see those. So of course, we start off with Geek Benchmark and we go in and we see what we have there with Geek Benchmarks. And in our CPU benchmark, you can see what it is here. Um, and the scores are typical for Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. If you look at it side by side with our Galaxy S22 Ultra, it's very similar with that score. And then we check the compute score. This is where it's a bit higher compared to the S22 Ultra at 6044. So those were pretty, pretty impressive. I wanted to add one more benchmark, which I've been using lately, uh, which is the 3D Mark Wildlife Stress Test Benchmark. So going to check those results. So in terms of stability while doing this test, because it runs for about 20 minutes, this was stable at 98.8%. So looking at the stress test chart, you can see that line just goes right across compared to the S22 Ultra, which kind of just goes down continuously across the board. So that really shows that this is capable of doing those longer extended game, gaming periods that you're looking for. Now, the games you wanna see that would take advantage of all that horsepower. Okay, let's start off with Black Desert Mobile. Now, Black Desert Mobile was locked at 45 frames per second. Uh, we set it at a higher setting, played well, ran smooth, looked like it had no issues whatsoever. So I, I thought that was actually impressive. I think that game is capped on Android. Um, that's all, one thing I can mention there. The other game, of course, I played was PUBG uh, New State, which is something a lot of people ask for. PUBG New State, um, in terms of its frame rates, uh, we're getting about 50 frames per second, you know, at this max settings, about 50, 51. Again, that's just something that I've exp I, I haven't experienced with any other device because this is the first time I'm playing that game. So we'll see how other devices actually stack up to, to it. But in terms of just the, the performance there, it was pretty solid and actually pre played pretty well. Now, Again, to the big bad boy that has basically shaken up every device we've tested this year and also last year and the year before that, which of course is Genshin Impact. Now, if you guys recall, on the S22 Ultra, on the S22 Plus, on the iPhone 13 Pro Max, none of them could hit 60 frames per second playing Genshin Impact at the highest setting. Well, fear not, your red Magic 7 can do that <laughs> with ease. I played for about 30, 40 minutes, I think 40 minutes, and it stayed at 60 frames per second. Actually went up a little bit to like 61 frames per second, did not dip. It was, it's pretty much capped at 60 frames per second. So it was actually able to do that quite effectively and well, and it just ran really smooth. That was truly impressive. And it kind of, you know, it just takes the crown for what you actually want to do gaming wise as a gamer. Now, be, being able to play at 60 frames per second, which means you're going to be pushing a lot of performance on this. So of course, how about heat? How well did that fan actually work? It's a little bit of a mixed bag in terms of the way I would, I would calculate it. Playing Genshin for that amount of time, this thing ran up to about 118 degrees. Yes, with the fan on and with the fan at its turbo setting. The fan actually has two settings which you can cycle through uh, or you can actually just set it to either one 
and it went up to 118, which was not good. So not something that I wanted to see right here. But if the other games while I played like PUBG Mobile, Call of Duty, the fan kicked in and it ran rather cool. It was fine. I got some temperatures in the 90s. So it was something that, again, yes, it works, but on for games that really push it as hard like Genshin Impact, this is where you definitely will need an external fan to add to it. So maybe something like the, the Razer fan, um, uh, we, the Razer RGB fan is something you can actually use to complement it, but that's just something to add uh, to the mix there. Now in terms of uh, battery life, you're looking at a 4,500 milliamp battery, which is a reduction from uh, last year, which we had a 5,000 milliamp battery. So that's a bit of a bummer here. I would say my battery life has been good. Um, overall, I haven't seen any major issues or dips with it. I have played for much longer periods of time, but honestly, I've only gone ahead and um, uh, charged it like at least once after, like after like a day and a half of just use. So again, battery life is, is good, but I would say 5,000 milliamps would have been better with this device. Now, before we round up, we know that there are a couple of things you guys are looking for. What about accessories? What about, you know, playing on streaming services? Of course, Xbox Game Pass plays pretty well. And I actually got to use the GameStar X2 uh, Type-C, and that actually worked and fit well with this device. And if you're looking for a controller that will fit this device, this will actually work. If you're not, if you can't get the one from, um, from Red Magic, but this actually works out pretty well. And again, the streaming service ran well, played at around 58 to 60 frames per second is what I was getting. Uh, but again, pretty much 60 frames per second for that kind of gameplay session. You do have a 65 watt battery, which should charge your device uh, pretty fast on there. And the speakers are very good, which you guys should take a quick listen. Now with all that though, you do have cameras on this device. And how well are those cameras? Well, I could lament and tell you it's a gaming phone. You're gonna get uh, images that are uh, good, not great, video that is um, solid, but not crazy. And again, you, that's not the main function of this device. The one thing I would say that I'm a bit disappointed is the cooling of the fan, especially for very high intensive games. Uh, that is something that I, I wish was still greatly improved. Even though it's it's much better than last year, I still need to see better improvements on there. And also it's it's not as loud, really. Actually just listen to it. It's really not as loud. Okay, so that is the Red Magic 7. Now, if you're looking to pick it up, I have links down below and you're wondering how much is this device? Well, this is not a Snapdragon um, a Gen 1 device that is priced at $1,000. No, pricing starts at $629 for 12 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, goes all the way up to $799 for 18 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. So you have uh, a range there and a pricing that will fit everyone. Comes in three colors, Obsidian, um, you've got also this gradient here and you've got the supernova and honestly, I do like the pricing for it and I think a lot of people will like it too. So leave your thoughts down below guys. If you have any questions or any comments, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and always enjoy your entertainment.